Ollie, I see you. Let me in, man. Dude, are you serious? I'm like, I'm like 12% body fat. I even brought your favorite champagne. What is going on guys? Will here, welcome to the video. I've been enjoying my summer a little bit too much lately and don't get me wrong, we should all be enjoying our summer but I have been eating a whole lot of crap. Like Be Good most of the time has not been in my 14. It's been showing in my physique. So it's time to clean things up. It's time to get back on the wagon. So for the next 10 days, I'm gonna try to get into the best shape that I possibly can. 10 days, it's not a lot of time. It's not, but you can do a whole lot. So I'm gonna vlog the whole experience, show you guys what I do, the strategies that I'll implement and we'll see how shredded I can get. So let's get into the first weigh-in. So first thing is first we gotta dictate how many calories are we gonna be consuming? So I maintain my body weight at 3000 calories. Now for a mini cut, which we're gonna be doing in this video, you can be a little bit more aggressive because we're not gonna be dieting for a whole lot of time. So I'm gonna be doing 2300 to 2400 calories. So personally from experience, I like to give myself a calorie range. That way I'm a little bit more adherent to the diet. That could be just me. So in terms of macros, I don't count macros. You don't need to count macros. I would just hit one gram of protein per pound of body weight, get your fiber in and let your carbs and your fat just fall where they fall. So I know I'm doing 2,300 to 2,400 calories. How do I go about setting this up? So some of you guys know, some of you guys don't know, but I actually stopped intermittent fasting mainly due to the fact that A, I wanted to and B, because I noticed I had better workouts even with just a little bit of something in my system. So what I've actually been doing is something called macro fasting. This is something I kind of just coined today. And it's mainly that I just eat protein during the day and that is it. So I'm still getting my protein feedings throughout the day. Uh, so I'm eating things like uh, yogurt, cottage cheese, egg whites, protein powder, uh, chicken, turkey, all lean sources of protein, but then I'm still fasting the other macros, the carbs and fat. So when I get later into the day, when I'm more hungry, I have this buffer of tons of carbs, tons of fat. So when you wanna go out to eat, because let's face it, getting a high protein meal when you go out to eat, it just doesn't happen or it's extremely expensive. So that way you don't have to worry about getting protein at a restaurant, you can pretty much get whatever you want. So with that said, uh, meal number one is gonna be a full container of egg whites with a little bit of broccoli. Here is my meal one of the day. So it's a full container of some egg whites with some broccoli. Then I'm gonna top it off with some salsa, hot sauce, and some mustard. So I like to bake it like a frittata because it kind of puffs up, makes it seem like you're eating a little bit more food. So right away, we are banging out 62 grams of protein, 10 grams of carbs, and zero grams of fat. Another great thing about the protein macro fasting is that it keeps your hunger down throughout the day. You may notice that when you have a carb heavy meal or just carbs in general, immediately after you eat, you're hungry again. That's because you have those massive blood sugar spikes. So by sticking to just protein throughout the day, uh, you're keeping the blood sugar spikes minimal and your hunger is pretty stabilized throughout the day. Egg whites have to be the most filling food on the planet. Okay, so I just got back from a grocery run and I picked up some of my essentials. So I got a bunch of stuff here for salad because the next 10 days salad mode is activated hard. And when it comes to salad, the thing that kills you the most is the dressing. So I just picked up a low calorie dressing. So the Bold House Farms company has a lot of good ones. So I got this creamy cheddar one. It's 25 calories per tablespoon. It's the lowest one that they had. So I went with that. Obviously you guys know I like ricotta. So the light ricotta cheese from the Solani brand is only 40 calories per four tablespoons. Really good on pizza. And you guys know these turkey bratwurst sausages, 90 calories, 17 grams of protein, two and a half grams of fat. These are sick, even by themselves with some mustard, some bean sprouts. Uh, I absolutely love barbecue sauce. Like barbecue chicken pizza is unreal. So this G Hughes sugar-free barbecue sauce, maple brown sugar flavor is really good. So it's only 10 calories per serving, which is two tablespoons. And then I found these, this is like a hidden gem in the freezer section at Longo's if you guys are in Canada. It's these uh, soup, Golden Home Super Grain Ultra Thin Pizza Crust. So they're pretty good size compared to my hand right here. And per pizza crust, the whole entire thing, you're looking at 360 calories and 12 grams of protein. So tonight for dinner, Katie and I are splitting a pizza. We would usually have our own, but calories and stuff. So we're gonna have half a pizza and then fill up on a salad for some volume, and that's dinner. So it's only really sinking in right now that I only get to eat half of this pizza. So I gotta learn to take my time and unfortunately pacing myself with, with anything is extremely difficult. But you gotta look at it like this, guys. If you're sharing a meal with your girlfriend 
It's not like they're stealing your gains. It's like you guys are sharing gains. Isn't that right, Katie? Yes. Katie's side, my side. Which one would you eat? My, mine's not even complete though. Come on. For my pizza, I put the cheese on the bottom right after the sauce, then I add my veggies and my meat, but Katie does the veggies, the meat, everything first, and then the cheese last. Is that weird? I don't know, what do you guys do? So our dinner is all cooked and we each have this massive salad. Like look at the size of this bowl. So it has spring mix, bean sprouts, vegan meat, mushrooms, then that ranch dressing. Then we both have half a pizza here with barbecue sauce, vegan cheese, banana peppers, green peppers. We put a whole lot of green peppers on mine. She's trying to turn me into a green pepper. Red onions and three ounces of rotisserie chicken. So after this meal, I still have four rice cakes to eat, two tablespoons of peanut butter and a serving of Greek yogurt. And after that, my total daily calories will be at 2,328. And the macros are 271 grams of protein, 199 grams of carbs and 55 grams of fat. And I feel great. I don't even feel like I'm dieting. And my current step total is 13,798. So typically I shoot for around 10,000 a day minimum, but when I'm dieting, I like to shoot for around 15, 20,000. But we'll talk a lot more about steps tomorrow. Good morning, everyone. Day number two it is a beautiful morning and I'm on my morning walk. So like I mentioned yesterday, I usually shoot for 10,000 steps on a normal day, but when I'm trying to diet down, I increase that total to 15 to 20,000 steps. I personally find walking to be very effective and very underrated for fat loss. It doesn't increase your appetite. It's easy to recover from and it actually burns a ton of calories. And a 180 pound person will burn around 100 calories per mile that they walk. And a 120 pound person will burn 65 calories per mile that they walk. So usually people shoot for 10,000 steps because that equates to five miles. So by me doing 15 to 20,000 steps, Steps. I'm burning 750 to an extra 1,000 calories just by walking. Another very important factor to consider is your NEAT, your non-exercise activity thermogenesis. This is the energy that you expend, not from exercising or sleeping, but just your day-to-day -day habits. And the calorie range here per day is massive. So just by changing up a few things, you can burn a lot of additional calories. So some things that you can do are, you know, you can start parking farther away when you do your groceries or any sort of shopping. You can put your headphones in and start walking around your house or the office for a work call. Start walking around your house when you're brushing your teeth. You might be a fan of the, the starfish position, but you might have to get more familiar with the missionary position. You know, all these things add up. It might sound like a little bit, but over time, over the months, over the weeks, it makes a huge difference. You know, like an inch isn't a lot, but throw that on your dating profile and boom, you're six feet tall. Oh, hey guys, you know earlier how I talked about getting 15 to 20,000 steps a day? For some people, it's just not feasible. You're stuck behind a desk, you have other responsibilities to get to, and you just don't have the time. But thanks to today's video sponsor, Crossrope, in under 30 minutes, you can get a full body home workout done that's fun, efficient, affordable, and you can bring it anywhere with you. All you gotta do is download the app to your phone, hook up your weighted skipping rope, and you're good to go. So the workout that I'm gonna be doing is called No Excuses. It's 16 minutes long, so there's literally no excuses that you can't do it. So it's a beginner rated workout. They have different levels of workouts depending on how good you are at skipping. So I'm gonna click on it now and let's get started. So as you guys can see, it's not just skipping, it's everything, full body workout, full body blast. Change ropes. Okay, now we're moving on to block B. So that was block A done. So we're changing the rope over to the two pound rope. Just snap it on both sides. Basic, there you go, we're good to go. Basic job. That's a gangster skipping rope, guys. You mean business in the playground with that. Next up, rest. Rest. So after the workout, it gives you a workout summary. So I burnt 290 calories, AKA, a Boston cream donut in just over 16 minutes. So if you guys want to pick up a cross rope, the link will be at the top of the description at crossrope.com slash Will Tennyson and get up to $40 off your first set. I'm about to go out for dinner now with my family looking like I'm about to retire and trade in my gym membership for a shuffleboard. Jeez, but Will, aren't you on a diet? Are you gonna be able to track the calories of the macros of the meal you're about to get? Well, yes, I'm on a diet and no, I won't be able to track the calories exactly to what I'm gonna get. But the minute you do a diet that stops you from going out and experiencing things with your friends and family, you are doing it wrong. I used to do that. I used to skip going out with my family and my friends because I didn't think I could track the macros to the T and it doesn't need to be exact. So that's why I like the macro fasting. So my current calories for the day are at 823 calories. I've had 129 grams of protein, 62 grams of carbs and eight grams of fat. So I have this massive buffer of carbs and fat. And as long as I don't just have table bread for dinner, I'm gonna hit my protein by default. So I'm not saying go out, get whatever the hell you want and just binge. Know what you got to work with and just choose right, choose smart and you'll be okay.
oftentimes when you're on a diet, you're gonna get to a point where you have a sweet tooth and you wanna go out and get something. And I'm no size queen, but I'd rather not go to Dairy Queen than go and get a snack size blizzard. Do you guys feel me? So I'm gonna show you guys what I do to curb my sweet tooth that's very low in calories. It's not as good as the Dairy Queen blizzard, but it gets the job done. So right here, it's gonna look like I'm sponsored by Jell-O, but I can assure you I'm not. So the first thing is uh, the sugar-free Jell-O. So these are only five calories per pack, so it's only one gram of protein. And I'll usually have these when I'm done with calories for the day. So this is like a last resort type of thing. They are great. Another thing I'll do is some rice cakes. So I love the caramel corn ones. I like the chocolate chip ones. So I'll go with that. And then pro tip for the rice cakes and the Jell-O is to top them off with a serving of Greek yogurt mixed in with eight grams of fat-free, sugar-free vanilla pudding mix. So it tastes like icing. And by topping these things off with that, it's amazing. So you guys have to try that. Another thing I'll do is I'll slice an apple into a bunch of slices and I'll dip it with uh, these fat-free, sugar-free uh, Jello pudding mixes. So I like the Dolce de Leche ones and the double chocolate ones are really good too. It's kind of like a, like a McDonald's Happy Meal type of thing that you get. And then last but not least, I have these yogurt bars. So you must be wondering, Will, where is the low calorie ice cream? Where is the Halo Top? So Halo Top gets to like 360 to 400 calories per pint, which is quite a lot for a snack for a lot of people. And I don't know about you, but if I open a pint of Halo Top and I don't eat the whole thing, it's a lot like when a white man hears Mr. Brightside on the radio and doesn't sing along. It just, it doesn't happen. So I usually go with these. These are only 90 calories per bar and they tasted just as good, if not even better. So I'll do that. So these are all very good quick options for a sweet tooth. But if you guys have a little bit more time, I'm gonna show you guys how to make some lemon ricotta protein crepes. First up, we are gonna do the lemon ricotta filling before we get onto the actual crepes. So it might seem like quite the elaborate recipe, but trust me, all the components are done very quickly. So we're just gonna blend everything here together. So I'm gonna start off with eight ounces of ricotta cheese. I'm then gonna add around two to four tablespoons of any milk of your choice. I usually go with cashew milk because it's low in calories. You might have to adjust as you blend if you wanna get it to be a little bit smoother. So I'm gonna add around two tablespoons to start. That looks about good. About a teaspoon of some vanilla. Good. And about two tablespoons of some stevia mix or any zero calorie sweetener of your choice. And guys, when life gives you lemons, you zest them. Zest of one full lemon is going in. And that is it. So we're just gonna blend this up until smooth. And then that is our lemon ricotta filling. I wish you guys could smell this. Let's give it a little taste here. So there it is. Oh my God. So that's it for the filling. So now it's on to the crepes. Okay, so the batter is made, it's only three ingredients. So it's one scoop of protein powder. I usually like to go with a vanilla protein powder, it just makes the most sense. Uh, two tablespoons of cashew milk and then two eggs. So here I have my handy dandy crepe maker. If you guys don't have one, which probably the majority of you guys don't have one, put it on a pan very quickly, like one minute per side. So I'm gonna start assembling these things. So I'm gonna pour this batter onto a plate. So all the components are done. This took me five minutes to make. So I have four crepes here and I didn't even use a quarter of the batter. So this is a very low calorie, high volume recipe. So we're gonna put this all together now. So I have my ricotta mix that was in the fridge. I'm gonna add a nice heap scoop in each one and then give them a roll. Four beautiful looking crepes. Now you can top these off with whatever you guys want. Fresh berries, but I like to microwave frozen berries. Kind of has that little bit of like a syrupness to it. And then I mix in one teaspoon of some stevia and it gives us a like, sweet kind of like compote jam. I'm just gonna put that right on top. And there we go guys, that's some epic dessert. Okay, let's give these a whirl here. You eat this when you close your eyes and you feel like you're in a cafe in Paris. So good. See guys, we may not be able to travel right now with what's going on, but it doesn't mean your taste buds can't.
So I just wrapped up my workout. So my calories have decreased quite a bit. My cardio has increased quite a bit, but my weight training always stays the exact same no matter what my goal is. You wanna to train to build muscle even in a fat loss phase, because guess what? You can build muscle in a calorie deficit. For some reason, there's this misconception that people have that when you're in a deficit, you gotta increase the reps, decrease the weight, start doing hit style training, like skipping between your sets, because you wanna get that heart pumping. You just wanna feel like the calories burning. And guys, the only thing you're gonna be feeling is like sad when you lose all your gains and get skinny fat when you do that. So train the exact same, train hard, train smart, train heavy, and train with a purpose. A lot of times people go on a diet and go like, okay, because I'm on a diet, I'm just gonna lose all my strength. But if you feel like that, you're gonna lose all your strength. So again, it's all in the mindset. Come in with a purpose. Come in like you're gonna build some muscle because you can build some muscle. Like I just hit some rep PRs in the bench press today. It's not because I'm on a diet. My body's gonna be like, you know what? We're not gonna adapt to like that new stimulus today, you know? So it's, it's kind of stupid. Katie and I were reminiscing, going to a movie, just having some nachos, just going on a good old date night. But obviously we can't do that. So what we're gonna do is bring date night to the house. So we were watching a movie and making our own homemade nachos. So if you have a craving for something like nachos, don't just ignore it, address the craving, but in a smart way. So it might not taste as good, but in this situation it is, because we are using, instead of the nachos, we are using some pop chips as the chips. And per the whole entire bag, you're looking at 380 calories for a lot of volume. So we're gonna top it off with some meat, some cheese, some veggies, this can be so good. Check out this monstrosity of a pile of nachos here. 772 calories, very, very filling. So I have the whole entire bag of pop chips. We got a bunch of veggies. We got some vegan cheese, vegan meat. I added some chicken because I want some animal on my nachos. On the side to dip, we got some salsa here. Uh, then I got some Greek yogurt instead of sour cream. That's like anabolic sour cream. And then I got Diet Coke, which is my drink of choice. You guys do not want to drink your calories on a diet. It's just such a complete waste. Go with water, go with Powerade Zero, Gatorade Zero. Black coffee, I mean water is probably the best choice, I just tend to gravitate towards chemicals, so going with a Diet Coke and that's dinner. Good morning everyone, morning of day number eight. So I woke up at 175.8 pounds, which means I'm up 1.6 pounds from yesterday. I know a lot of people would see that on the scale and be like, crap, time to drop the calories even more and unlock starvation mode, but no guys, it's not that big of a deal. It's your body's natural occurrence to be shifting weight every single day. And usually it's just hydration levels. It could also be things like stress, it could be volume of food that you had, artificial sweeteners, like I had a ton of Powerade Zeros yesterday just to curb my appetite. So that's probably what did the weigh in for me. Uh, so I obviously didn't uh, gain 1.6 pounds of fat in a day. I didn't gain 1.6 pounds of muscle in a day even though that'd be pretty damn sick. So what I usually like to do is take all my weigh-ins for the week, divide it by seven, find the weekly average and that will be my weekly weigh-in and hopefully as the weeks go by, my weight goes down slightly. So don't take day-to-day -day weigh ins as like the true thing. So today's cardio is gonna be Orange Theory at home. So I rarely ever do the same form of cardio every single day. I find it very important to keep things fresh, keep things new, keep things exciting. So that way you don't ever dread the cardio that you do. So I track all of my cardio by the calories burned. If you track it this way, that way you have the freedom to kind of do whatever the hell you want. If you wanna go for a hike, if you wanna go for a swim, bike ride or run, if you're feeling like a marathon man, throw on the open goal and just go to town. So uh, I only progress and add calories burned if I'm I'm on a weight loss plateau, so I'll either add calories, add some steps, or take away food, but take away food is usually the last resort. Okay, so I ended up getting some poke for lunch. I love poke on a diet, it's very low in calories. So I got two scoops of tuna on a bed of lettuce with a ton of other veggies and some pineapple because obviously, so when I go out to eat on a diet, I like to eliminate as much of the unknowns as I possibly can. So eliminating the sauces, taking away the fried foods because there's tons of oils that you can't really account for. I don't like to use any sort of carbs because like for example, if you go to Chipotle and you get a burrito bowl with like rice, depending on who is scooping that rice, the calories may vary by a couple hundred. Whereas if you got a salad bowl with the lettuce, the calories may be like within 10 calories, so it's pretty negligible. So again, when you go out, be smart about it. So if you 
keep it simple, you can be fairly accurate with your estimations. So I would estimate the calories of that poke bowl to be around 350 calories, and I'm fairly confident with my accuracy because I've been doing this for a very, very, very long time. So if you're new to the whole calorie counting game, just be extra cognizant when you're cooking meals at home to see what like eight ounces of meat looks like, see what one cup of rice looks like. Just know your portion sizes so when you go out to eat, you're pretty close to the real thing. You can stay on track with your diet, and eventually it'll just become secondhand. So it is currently 11 p.m. right now, and I'm starving, and my calories are done for the day. So I kind of want to pick up the camera and talk about the fact that no matter how good you are making high volume, low calorie recipes, there's going to come a time on a diet where you're going to be hungry and you're going to want to overeat. It's inevitable. It's going to happen. You got to embrace that hunger. Don't give in for short term satisfaction. Think about your goals. Think about why you're doing what you're doing. Hunger comes and goes. I can promise you guys that this is what separates people who get lean to very lean is getting past those tough times. So if you're hungry, get your mind off the food, go and do something else, have some water and the hunger will go away. Okay, so it is the morning of day 11, which means the 10 day transformation is finished. So I stepped on the scale this morning at 173 pounds and I started the challenge off at 179.2 pounds, which means I lost 6.2 pounds. I know that sounds like a lot, but in the first couple weeks of a diet, you will drop a lot of weight. I definitely noticed a big difference in my abdominal region and especially in my face, definitely leaned out a lot there. So a lot of people seem to think that when you go on a diet, it takes so long, like months and months to start seeing results, but it really doesn't. If you know what you're doing, you can start to see results pretty damn quick. And once you know what to do, all that's left is having that tunnel vision mentality. All you see at the end of the tunnel is reaching your goals. Nothing else is getting in your way. Nobody is stopping you. You execute every single day until you reach your goals. So that is gonna wrap up this video, guys. If you guys enjoyed it, please give it a like. Subscribe to the channel if you're new, and I'll see you guys in the next one.